Rhapsody of Realities. Saturday, February 4, 2023. Topic, There's Help for You. And it came to pass, when God helped the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams, 1 Chronicles 15:26. The Bible tells us how David got some Levites to move the Ark of God into a place he had prepared for it in Jerusalem. But something striking that we observed is that the Bible says, God help the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Isn't it amazing? Though the Levites were called to bear the Ark, God helped them to carry out their ministry. God also helped a man named Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. He had gone to battle against the Syrians in alliance with Ahab, the king of Israel. Having no idea that Jehoshaphat was in the battle, the king of Syria instructed his commanders to go after Ahab, the king of Israel. Don't fight anyone else, just go after King Ahab and kill him, he told them. When his men saw Jehoshaphat, they thought he was the king of Israel and cornered him. But the Bible says, Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him, 2 Chronicles 18:31. The Bible also tells us about a young king, Uzziah, who started out as a teenager. He was responsible for several inventions and technological transformation of Judah. The Bible specifically says that he was marvelously helped of the Lord until he became strong, 2 Chronicles 26 15. Isn't this and more what we have today in the Holy Spirit that lives in us? He's your helper. Is there anything you're trying to achieve? Or are you experiencing some form of trouble? There's supernatural help available for you. The Holy Spirit is in you to help you in ministry, in business, in your finances and relationships. He'll move trouble away from you just as he moved Jehoshaphat's enemies away. He'll give you creative ideas that'll make your name spread abroad. You're not disadvantaged in any way, the Helper is in you, and that's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Prayer Dear Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as my Helper, you're always with me and in me. You're my refuge and strength. I'm yielded to you, to be led, guided, strengthened, and taught the things of the Kingdom of God. I'm rightly positioned in the center of God's perfect will because I'm under your influence and sway every day of my life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Further study, John 14 16 AMPC, Romans 8 26 AMPC. One Year Bible Reading Plan, Matthew 24 36-51 and Exodus 28. Sunday, February 5, 2023. Topic, The Tabernacle of Praise. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord, Psalm 27 6. In the days of David, there were two tabernacles, one was in Gibeon, while the other was in Jerusalem. 1 Chronicle 16 talks about both of them. The tabernacle in Gibeon, which was the tabernacle of Moses, was the place of sacrifice, read 1 Chronicle 16 39-40 NIV. The tabernacle in Jerusalem, which was the tabernacle of David, had Levitical singers whom David had appointed to minister before the Ark of God, and he, David, appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, and to record, and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel, 1 Chronicle 16 4. The Levites were to minister before the ark night and day, singing praises to the Lord. While in Gibeon, they were offering the sacrifices of bulls and goats in Jerusalem, they offered sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving continually to the Lord. David said, I will praise the name of God with a song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs, Psalm 69 30, 31. Many years later, in the New Testament, James, while debating with some church elders about God's plan for the Gentiles, quoted a prophecy, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, Acts 15:16. Notice the Lord didn't say, 
I will build again the tabernacle of Moses. Rather, he said he would build again the tabernacle of David where was unending praise. This tells us what we're supposed to have in the church today, unending praise in the sanctuary. It'll usher us into a higher and more glorious arena of life and ministry, as we build a living tabernacle that'll never be destroyed. Prayer Dear Father, I'll bless your name at all times, and your praise shall continually be in my mouth, declaring your greatness in all the earth, and making known your wonders to all generations. Thank you for your glory in my life, your righteous, holy, gracious, kind, and pure. Your kingdom is everlasting, and you rule the nations in righteousness. Blessed be your name forever, O Lord. Amen. Further study, 1 Chronicles 1639-40 NIV, Psalm 150-1-6. One Year Bible Reading Plan, Matthew 25-130 and Exodus 29-30 Matthew 25-130 and Exodus 29-30. Monday, February 6, 2023 Topic, There's an Urgency And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, Matthew 24, 24,14 One important thing the Holy Spirit is causing the church to do in these last days is to speed up the preaching of the gospel. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This is God's mission for the church today. The time is short. We all must understand the urgency of the hour, the day we're living in, and get serious about the things of the kingdom. Preach the gospel, preach it with all your heart and with all the boldness and love that God has given you. In Matthew 28, 18-20, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, Amen. What an assurance! Nothing could bolster more confidence in us to speed up the preaching of the gospel and take it to the ends of the earth than the words of the Master in the verses we just read. We're in the times of the signs, and the final sign is already unfolding before our eyes, which is the massive salvation of souls around the world. Already, we've taken the gospel to billions of people around the world and in every known living language, through rhapsody of realities. But we must keep at it until we've reached everybody, just as the Lord instructed. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in us, and brought us this far, He'll take us to the finish line prayer. Dear Father, I thank you for the opportunities one have to preach the gospel and reach more people with the message of salvation. I move with the speed and urgency of the Spirit, guided by your wisdom in leading many to righteousness. I receive increased grace and ability to fulfill the ministry of reconciliation to those in my world, and in the regions beyond, in Jesus' name. Amen. Further study, 2 Timothy 4,2 Mark 16, 15-16. One Year Bible Reading Plan, Matthew 25, 31-46 and Exodus 31.